Hello friends, Mandar here. I am back with another video. Today we will talk about some important topics regarding the job loss. There are a lot of layoffs going on in the tech industry and in some other industries as well. And there are some people who are caught up in the H1B situation when they get, get laid off. So let's talk about some of the scenarios and what are the options. And also the 60 day grace period and some clarifications regarding them. I also have some other important topics and announcements. So watch this video until the end and let's get started. If you are here for the first time, welcome. My name is Mandar and I make immigration and lifestyle related videos for US and Canada. I am not an immigration lawyer so anything that I say on this video or on my channel is for information purpose only. And for your specific immigration needs, before you take any action, you should hire a competent immigration lawyer. Now lately there have been a lot of green cards that were issued and some people have come back to me and said okay what are the investment options. So if you haven't checked out my video, previous video where I talk about the stocks and other kind of investments, do check that out. And I am working on some follow-up videos on cryptos and other topics that are more focused on those topics. So if you haven't subscribed already, do subscribe and like to the channel because that will also get you into the giveaway that I have announced a couple of weeks back. And before we start, there are links in the description that are affiliate links. And if you buy any of those products using those links, you will get a little bit of a discount and the channel will get a little bit of a commission. Now I had a really good stroll along the Memorial Drive and the Storo Drive in Boston area yesterday. It was a remarkable temperature, it was a lot of people were outside and Boston had a couple of days of record breaking temperature for this time of the year. We were in the 70s at least for this time of the year, that's not too common. So we enjoyed a little bit of an extended summer. It was a great run and walk and a lot of great shots. If you ever visit Boston, this is the stroll I would highly recommend. It's on the both, it's on both sides of the river and it is amazing. I also ran into a couple of my viewers and friends from YouTube. That was great. Some people just stopped by and said hello to me and that was amazing. So if you ever run into me, do stop by and say hello. I would really appreciate that. Let's now let's look at what's going on in the tech sector right now. Now you must have heard about the layoffs that are coming. Twitter laid off about 50% of this workforce. So did Meta and many other companies. It's unfortunate that these companies were growing exponentially in the last couple of years and all of a sudden they had to tighten their belts. It's all because of the slowing in the growth, slowing in the bottom line numbers that they have. Now in the last video we talked about picking up these stocks for these companies but that was on the positive side. On the negative side, employees were really impacted. There were thousands of layoffs. I don't know the exact numbers, but they were about 10,000. That is an incredible impact to not only people who are on the visa, but also normal people, even if you are a green card holder or a citizen. All of a sudden losing your job and having to look out in the market for your next job is not fun for anybody. But let's talk about some scenarios for people who were on the H1B and who do not have a green card yet. So let's talk about the first category. The first category of the people are people who are on the work visa such as H or L visa and if they have their green card in process. So you may have not received your green card yet and you may be in certain stages of the green card. Now let's look at people who are not in the adjustment of status. So if you have gone through your perm or if you are going through your perm application and if you maybe you have your I-140 approved or even not approved. So in that situation, you are not in the adjustment of status because you haven't yet applied for your I-485. So that puts you in a, a little bit of a perilous situation if you all of a sudden lose your job. So if you are on the H-1B and you are not on in the I-485 stage yet, you have a little bit more to worry about because now your H-1B terms are lost because H-1B, you have to be working for your employer, sponsoring employer, full time during your stay in the United States. Now all of a sudden with a layoff or a job loss, you don't have that condition fulfilling. So in this case, what happens is you have 60 days of grace period to find another employer, H-1B sponsoring employer who can transfer your current H-1B to their own company. If you can do that within 60 days, that will be good for you. Now there are other people, some lawyers say that you only have 10 days to leave the United States. But that is, that is particularly true when you have exhausted your H-1B term, full six years of term. That is, that becomes incredibly important that you leave the country if you don't have your 
uh, green carding process so that is a separate story we can talk about it in a separate topic but in this particular situation when you lose your job on h1b and if you are not in your adjustment of status situation you need to have your next job lined up within 60 days and do your h1b transfer at least initiate your h1b transfer now the second scenario is if you are an h1b and you are already in your adjustment of status which means you have further along in your green card process to the point where you have applied for your 485 now if you have applied for your 485 and it has if it's not yet approved you are in something called pending adjustment of status so that is the status you will have regardless of whether you have your or whether you maintain your h1b status or not so in this scenario you are less impacted by the layoffs at least in terms of your immigration status so what happens is if you get laid off you no longer are fulfilling your h1b terms but if you have your pending adjustment of status which is pending i-485 then you have your ead probably by now and you can use your ead to look for your next job if you can get an employer to sponsor your h1b that is good enough you can still do go ahead and do the transfer but if you still don't have if you don't want to bother or if you want to open up your chances of getting your job to somebody who ha who is not sponsoring your h1b that is possible because you have an ead which is based on your adjustment of status so in this particular scenario you will be in adjustment of status your status will be valid even if you have lost your job and your work authorization is your ead card that will allow you to look for your next job and work for your next job so in this case you are less worried also your advanced parole card will allow you to travel outside the united states and come back so that those were the two scenarios now next a lot of questions regarding when do the 60 day period start now let's look at this sponsor video before we move on to our next topic and that brings me to the sponsor of this video which is surfshark surfshark is a vpn provider and that gives you a lot of benefits that you are looking for now here is what all surfshark has to offer it gives you the power to protect your online privacy control your personal data access content safely and unlock the exclusive benefits of this what else can it do you can browse privately encrypt your internet activity so that no one can steal or track your data hide your location this is the key where i was talking about being able to watch the netflix and amazon from different countries block ads and malware stay safe on public wi-fi keep searches private and get real search results and if you are in the tech or IT industry, you know what VPN can provide. Now, if you click the link in the description with my code Mandar, you will get a discount, almost 83% discount on VPN deal and plus three months of absolutely free VPN. So check out the link in the description. And if you do get the Surfshark through my discount code, it will also benefit the channel. Now next, a lot of questions regarding when do the 60 day period start? So the 60 day period is from the moment you lose your payroll. So basically if, if the company has given you a last payroll date, that's when your 60 days clock start. Again, there is a little bit of a confusion in this particular scenario. Some companies when they do layoffs, they give the impacted people certain number of months where they are still on the payroll. So they can say like uh, you will be on a payroll for the next three months or six months or whatever the case may be in that case if they are running your payroll and you are on a paid leave kind of situation in that situation you are technically on the payroll and you are a company is producing pay stubs for you in that situation that is a much better situation because now your clock hasn't started your clock will only start when your payroll date uh, after your final payroll date whenever it is after three months or six months whatever it is but other companies who do layoffs uh, other category of companies who do layoffs they have a very hard uh, end of payroll date so they immediately have a payroll termination date for you which might be immediate and then they would give you a severance that is paid out in the next next couple of months then severance does not mean that you are on the payroll technically it means that company has given you some amount in order to sustain your your financial needs for the next couple of months so that the impact of the job loss is lesser but this is a diff this is different than keeping you on a payroll 
when you are on a payroll you are getting all the benefits that you had when you are still working such as medical dental all the contributions to your 401k and so on and so forth so that that's when you are technically on the payroll and your clock hasn't started but if the company gives you a severance and your payroll date is already terminated in that case your 60 days would start on the last day or the day after right after when your payroll date is completed even if you are getting severance letters or uh, pay stubs later on uscis typically looks at your pay stubs if you whether whether or not you are in the status and that is when you apply for your h1b transfer and so on so in that particular situation if your pay stub says severance i think in my opinion uscis would not consider that as being on a payroll whereas if if it's a regularly run payroll for a future end date for your uh, payroll date then in that case uscis may consider those pay stubs to be valid for your employment for your for the purpose of your h1b so that is my interpretation check with your lawyer check with your company lawyer what they have to say about it but as far as i know this is what the difference is this is when the 60 days period start put down in the comment section below if you have been impacted or reach out to me if you have any specific questions regarding your situation if you have been recently been laid off from the companies like twitter uh, facebook amazon or whatever so i thought this was a timely topic to be discussed at this point of time now another thing i wanted to point out is if you lose your job while pending adjustment of status or if you are on h1b you technically don't have a job uh, or the sponsoring employer for your for your i45 or for your green card process so uh, at the time of the approval of your green card or approval of your i485 you need to have a valid basically a bona fide job offer that was similar to the one that was mentioned in your i4 i140 so that is something to keep in mind so if even if you have been retrogressed now if your priority date is retrogressed it may not become current in the next several months or maybe a year or so in that situation you still want to make sure that you have a valid job offer or you have already joined the company uh, even on, even though technically you haven't been impacted in terms of the status so that is something that i wanted to uh, kind of clarify if you have any questions on that do reach out to me on my patreon now i'm still getting a lot of people contacting me uh, regarding resending letters that they are receiving from uscis at least 7 to 8 people have contacted me so far who have received a letter from uscis uh, mentioning them that the recently approved green card has is being rescinded and that is for a very specific situation don't panic if your green card was approved and you know you have been expert you know for sure in your mind uh, whether or not your date was current on the day when the uscis approved your i485 so if you look at the day when the uh, you look at the day when uscis approved their i485 on that day was your priority date current if the answer is true then your green card is then you don't have to worry about your green card it is valid and you can uh, you can continue and go on with your life but if the date was not current on the day when your i485 was um, uh, approved then th there is there may be a problem there the reason i say may be a problem is because in some cases uscis claims that they have uh, pulled a visa number for you before they approved your process so uh, approved your case i don't know how they do it but they claim to have pulled your visa number several weeks back before they approved it it's kind of funny but in uh, in the most situations that may not be the case and uscis may still send you a letter uh, that they are resending your green card so nothing to panic about you know if your date was current on the day when the i485 was approved or not but if you have any questions regarding your particular case do contact me on my patreon site and i'll be happy to give you my perspective and one more thing i wanted to say is the visa bulletin has still not come out in the last couple of months i have seen it come out uh, around the 8th of the month today is already 13th of the month and it still hasn't come out so what it tells me is that it was probably due to the election that could be the reason for the delay in the visa bulletin or they are working on the numbers which may be a good news because uh, if i want to be optimistic i would say that the reason they are taking a little bit longer this time around is because they have the numbers of the spillovers and they may move the eb dates forward that is just my speculation but we'll see what happens it's most likely that it will come out tomorrow or day after or sometime this week so we'll watch out for that and as soon as it comes out i'll make my visa bulletin review video 
Now some reminders, I have a session coming up with the Canadian immigration lawyer and the company uh, CEO of company Sendesis. They will be giving some information on path to Canada. People who are looking to work from Canada for their current employer or uh, find a new job in Canada and move there uh, for some reason. If you are in that situation, do watch out for my video in the next two weeks. I'll be announcing the date as we get closer, but it will be somewhere around 20th of, uh, 20th of November. Like and subscribe to my channel so that you get that notification on that particular issue. Another reminder is I have a giveaway going on right now since last couple of weeks and I will be doing the winner announcement in the first week of December. The rules for the entry are very simple. Do like this video and any subsequent video up to the giveaway winner announcement. Subscribe to my channel and leave a comment, a meaningful comment. It could be any topic on, their, on your mind regarding the layoffs, regarding the job situations, regarding investment opportunities or so on and so on or any other topic that you might feel relevant to this audience. So good luck on the giveaway. And by the way, the giveaway is Apple Watch 8 in aluminum edition. So that's really what I wanted to say in this video. If you like the content of this video, hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel. And I'll see you in the next one.